Hiyubu Kyosuke joined the army to use his powers and help humanity. But soon, his most trusted superior received a predomination that Hiyubu would destroy the world and decided to shoot him. Managing to survive, Hiyubu decides to create a criminal Esper organization called Pandra and destroy the world. Espers are people with super abilities divided into categories based on their strength. There are hundreds of thousands of level 1 to 3 Espers around the world. But only 3% of the Espers can reach level 4 or 7. Our story begins when we see a young child named Hiyubu Kaiyosuk boarding a boat to Japan. Upon arriving at his destination, he meets Tsubomi, a wealthy researcher who worked with his father. Hiyubu's father recently passed away and expressed his will for his son to live with his ex-colleague whom he trusted the most. He gets to meet Tsubomi's daughter called Fujiko. She quickly befriends him and starts acting as an older sister, making him feel more comfortable in this new unknown country that will be his new home. But she also decides to prove to him that he won't ever feel alone, by showing that she's also an Esper, making his luggage float. Sometime later after moving into the Tsubomi's house, we see Hiyubu writing a letter to his deceased father. Fujiko suddenly appears in the room while floating, taking the letter from him to read. Embarrassed, Hiyubu uses his S powers and takes the letter from her, surprising her, as she, a high-ranked Esper, couldn't even suppress his power. The Japanese military shortly enters the room accompanied by Tsubomi, and invites the new siblings to join their new Esper special unit, explaining they want to use Esper's abilities to help the world. Hiyubu gets fascinated by Captain's Heiji proposition but asks for some time to think about it. At night while laying in bed, Hiyubu remembers the time he spent with his father. His father was initially a famous Esper researcher, who usually performed some tests on his wife, but one of those tests backlashed, making her lose her life. He started to treat Hiyubu badly and ignored him because Hiyubu, who inherited his mother's powers wanted to save people. His famous last words to Hiyubu were for him to live as a normal human, instead of being used as a living military weapon. Even so, after pondering about his father's words and the possibility to help the world, Hiyubu makes his decision and chooses to join the special unit with Fujiko. One year later, the two get involved in an accident with a naval officer, forcing the army to discuss the possibility of disbanding the special Esper unit. But Heiji proposes to make a bet with the naval army. He proposes for the incident to be forgotten if one of their Aspurs can beat Zero, the brand new Japanese fighter plane. Heiji chooses Hiyubu to represent the ESP unit in combat with the Navy fighter, as he's the one with the greatest potential. But he struggles with training for the upcoming match, as his father's words keep coming back to his mind, haunting him. One of his colleagues tries to give him strategic advice to use another weapon in the match, but he refuses, pointing out that every fighter plane has the same weakness, its cockpit. In other words, he just needs to shoot his weapon once, at the pilot's head, scaring his colleague with his deadly eyes. On the day of the duel, Hiyubu finds out the pilot representing the Navy is the same one of the incident. The match begins, but Hiyubu has a hard time as his father's words keep coming to his mind. But he remembers Heiji's words about him having a gift to save people, and overcomes his fear. He evades the fighter plane attacks and wins the duel by shooting the cockpit. Just then, three dolphins show up and reach Hiyubu and the others through ESP and appeal for their assistance as a U.S. submarine pursues them. One of the dolphins is killed by a torpedo. The ESP unit is able to save the other two and fend off the pursuer with the aid of the Navy fighter. However, before leaving, the dolphins warn Hiyubu about a grim fate waiting for him and his comrades. Years later, after Hiroshima was bombed by an atomic bomb, Hiyubu visits Heiji, the person he trusts the most, and the latter reveals that Japan will surrender and the majority of the ESP unit is dead. But Heiji has a premonition that Hiyubu's powers will eventually destroy the world and decides to end him right there. Heiji shoots him twice in the chest and then puts on a bullet to his head. Miraculously, Hiyubu survives and gets up, instantly killing Heiji in return, while swearing vengeance on the normal humans who betrayed him and his friends, and decides to create an organization called Pandra to accomplish his goal. Fast forward to several years later, Hiyubu became a level 7 Esper, while also being the strongest in the world. Over the past years, he's been mastering his Esp skills to the point of having several different abilities, from teleportation, hypnosis, fire, and a few others. We see him, who now has natural white-colored hair destroying an entire army before turning himself into the authorities. While preemptively invoking his right to be silent and joking, he must wear a school uniform. He is then taken to a special Esper jail. Upon his arrival, Hiyubu encounters Andy Hinamiya, an Esper prisoner who strangely possesses no discernible special abilities. Hiyubu offers Andy the option to join Pandra after they cause some ruckus, and both are taken to solitary confinement. 
During lunchtime, the cook puts some drugs in Hiibu's stew, but he notices it and gives the drug stew to Andy instead. While brawling with another prisoner, Andy is unable to defend himself because of the drug's effect. He takes many punches to the gut before losing consciousness. He then wakes up in a surgery room and gets freed by Hiibu who informs him that the prison is being utilized as a location for unauthorized Asper experimentation. Together, they arrive at the location where Ajiri, a young Asper child, is being detained. The jail warden sends a monster made by uniting numerous Asper body parts to attack them. During the first stages of the fight, it seems to be at per, with Hiyubu even managing to strike down. During the fight, Hiyubu notices a glimpse of Andy's power. He then Hibu deactivates his limitation and is able to unleash his true power, ultimately killing the beast. In the end, the three manage to escape and get picked up by other Pandra members, and Andy is welcomed aboard their base of operations, the ocean liner ship Catastrophe. However, Andy manages to be alone and reveals himself to be a spy sent to infiltrate the organization and contacts his superiors. A week has passed since Hiibu rescued Ajiri. Hiibu explains to the team that Andy has the power to neutralize all ESP, and that being close to someone who uses ESP powers might cause symptoms like migraines, nausea, or toothaches. Due to problems with Andy's background and the fact that they cannot read his mind with ESP powers, Magi is wary of him. But he cannot focus on investigating, as Pandra has a new mission to smuggle some weapons. They meet a mafia boss named Carlo, Hiibu's friend from World War II. He notes that Hiibu is still looking young despite being over 80 years old, as he uses his ESP abilities to regenerate himself and look young. However, the mobsters they intended to trade with started to attack Pandra before they initiate the negotiations. Hiibu gave orders to Andy to shoot Carlo if the signal is given, but when the signal is given, he is unable to fire. Knowing this in advance, Hiibu hypnotizes Carlo's guards to kill each other. He then cuts off Carlo's head, revealing it to be a robot. Despite this fact, Hiibu locates the real Carlos, whose is a high-level Esper since he is able to launch an assault on Hiibu a street away. However, Hiibu removes his limiter and quickly dispatches him. Hiibu then gives Andy a limiter to lessen the impact of his Esp negating talents, making him more vulnerable to mind reading. Meiji asks Yujiri to read Hinamiya's mind, but Yujiri replies that she won't unless instructed by Hiibu. At a party hosted by Sophie Grace, Princess of Monarch, for international aid organizations, Minamoto and Sakaki run across several Pandra members and Hiibu. Minamoto is the commander of a special Asper team called the Children Formed by Babel. The team consists in three level 7 Aspers who work for the government to enable Aspers to have a home, making Pandra their enemies, because Hiibu wants to create his own government. Hiibu and his group are approached by Minamoto and Sakaki but they manage to escape unnoticed. Later, it is discovered that Sophie is also missing. It is revealed that Sophie is in Pandra's custody as part of their effort to safeguard the princess from an assassination plot at Ajiri's request. Meanwhile, Sakaki and Minamoto question the authorities and attempt to access the data on a USB flash drive Sakaki stole from Hiibu's pocket. Sophie befriends Ajiri and decides to accompany Andy as they stroll through the city. Hiibu uses Mass's hypnosis ability to provide their adversaries with incorrect information about her whereabouts to trick them into a trap. Meanwhile, the princess arrives at an abandoned orphanage and recalls meeting Ajiri as one of the orphans being fostered there before disappearing mysteriously. The mastermind of the assassination plot finds them and wants to kill her because she protects the Spurs. Still, Minamoto, who had previously identified the adversary by studying the papers, quickly takes the police with him. The criminal fires at Sophie, but Andy shields her by taking the bullet to the shoulder, and Hiibu disarms him before he is taken into custody. Despite Sophie's promise to take care of Ajiri, she chooses to stay with Hiibu and the others and bids her farewell. As the catastrophe reaches the coast of Japan, Andy is exploring the ship as he was ordered by his superiors. The ship is suddenly assaulted by Babel members who send the children to sneak aboard. Hiibu goes after Kaoru, their leader, by himself. They start fighting, each attacking with their barrage, which seems to be evenly matched. Meanwhile, Andy gets captured by Ai and Shiho, who steal the ship's master key from the squirrel and use it to breach the catastrophe's central computer. Kaoru realizes that their goal has been met and stops fighting Hibu. He then heads to the ship to check on his team and regroup them. After getting back together, the Pandra members launch a counterattack. Andy uses his second Asper power to temporarily nullify the powers of anybody he touches, and subdues Fujiko to remove the hack's control. At the same time, the rest of the group diverts the children. In a desperate attempt to contain the catastrophe, Kaoru, Ai, 
and Shiho combine their abilities with their limiter's triple boost feature. Still, Hiibu repels them when he opens his limiter and overpowers the triple boost. Hiibu then deploys a field, allowing the ship to float on air and use spatial movement to flee. Andy is given the responsibility by Meiji, Mamaji, and Yo to accompany Ajiri when they are called back while the catastrophe is being repaired. Hiibu, in the meantime, sneaks into a Babel Medical Center to conduct some tests on his body. A birthday celebration is planned for Hiibu back at the catastrophe. Almost all the members award him with presents except Andy, who says he didn't know about it and promises to bring something next year. This triggers Hiibu to think about his medical results, which shows he has a limited amount of time remaining to live. Hiibu tells the others that their next task is to steal a brand new ECM device created in the US. Andy then sends a message to his superiors, explaining Hiibu's next course of action. When the mission starts, Minamoto's squad ambushes Hiibu and the rest. Kaoru, who had just learned about precognition of the impending destruction of the catastrophe, stops Hiibu proclaiming that she will capture him. Hiibu attacks Kaoru with full power, rendering her unconscious. Meanwhile, Andy takes advantage of the situation and tries to finish his mission to steal the ship's defensive mechanism named Aihachigo. Hiibu is stopped by Kaoru from heading to Andy's location, and despite having an extremely fatigued body, he uses his full power to deal with her, knocking her unconscious. Hiibu then finds Andy in front of Aihachigo and states he always knew Andy was a spy, but now he has no choice but to assassinate him. Andy makes use of his abilities to disable Aihachigo's cloaking device, leaving the catastrophe vulnerable to a US military attack. After learning about the situation from Meiji and the others, Minamoto confronts them. He then explains that Babel's true goal was to capture Pandra to stop the onslaught, allowing them to depart and aid Hiibu and the others. A task team breaks inside the ship and imprisons Ajiri while Hiibu is occupied fighting off dozens of battle drones dispatched by the US Army. Instead of shooting, Andy tries to stop his boss from taking her by talking to him. However, Andy's superior betrays him, shoots him in the chest, taking Aihachigo and fleeing away. Soon after, Andy awakens to discover that the bullet was stopped by his limiter, leaving him unharmed. Meanwhile, Hiibu starts to feel like his body reached a point where he will fade away. He then uses his last remaining strength to annihilate the enemy fleet in a single motion before passing out. However, the catastrophe is ultimately sunk after taking one more shot, with everyone aboard having left the ship. Except for Hiibu and Andy. Andy saves Hiibu from drowning, and Babel comes to help them both. Fujiko and Sakaki take Hiibu to the Tsubomi estate to get treated, while Aburo gets the US transmitter chip out of Andy's body and destroys it. On Kaoru's order, Shiho holds Aburo back and asks her where Hiibu is. Andy talks the girls into taking him with them. When they get to the mansion, Hiibu asks Andy about the man who talked to them on the catastrophe. Andy confirms Hiibu's suspicions that the man is Heiji Saito who is still alive for some reason. Sakaki tells the girls that Hiibu is dying, and Kaoru offers to give him some of her blood to save his life. Now that Heiji has both Ajiri and Ayachigo, he plans to use both of them to stop the Asper revolution that Kaoru and Hiibu are planning to start. Sometime later, Hiibu leaves on his own, even though he is still not fully healed, despite Kaoru's pleas, and accepts Andy's offer to go with him. The two then leave to face Heiji and get Ajiri back. They go to the home of Andy's former contact and force him to accompany them to the facility where Ajiri is being held. However, the agent manages to notify his friends about them in secret. The two reach there only to discover that Ajiri is no longer there. And after a brief talk with Heiji, who discloses his intention to use her to kill Kaoru, Finding themselves in an ambush, Andy and Hiibu struggle to get away until the enemy catches them. But Meiji, and the others are able to save them in time. The Pandra members gather once more. Hiibu understands that Heiji's next target is Norman Green, the recently elected mayor who supports Asper protection measures. So they head to New York. When they arrive, they locate Ajiri. The team heads out to retrieve her, but she defeats Meiji, Mamaji, and Yo while in some sort of trance. Andy manages to find her and follow her to the site of Green's inauguration but gets restrained by the police. Luckily, Minamoto and Sakaki appear and save him. They tell him that they are working with the city to thwart Heiji's plot to have the new mayor slain by an Asper and change the future. Andy manages to stop Ajiri from attacking Green, but she unleashes a hypnotic trance that affects everyone else in the vicinity to spark a riot, except for Andy and his companions who didn't get affected. Hibu appears and approaches Ajiri to free her mind as the riot spreads throughout the city, but her hypnosis forces him to face his own delusions of the past. 
As a result, he unlocks his powers despite knowing that, given the state of his body, doing so could kill him. After successfully rescuing Ajiri, Hiyubu's powers start to go rampage, so he begs Andy to take her away before his powers destroy him. However, Andy is unmoved and utilizes his skills to control Hiyubu's abilities to save his life. Hiyubu eventually meets Heiji, who begs to kill him because his friends have already been arrested. But Hiyubu declines and chooses to punish him by wiping out all of his memories instead. After a brief discussion with Hiyubu, Andy resolves to forge his own path in life and bids farewell to Pandra's members. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.